Hey everyone, this is Wyatt Jackson here. And I'm Devin Marshall. And you're listening to Adventures into Odyssey. Hey everyone, we're back this week talking about... Episode 596, Cover of Darkness. Woo! Uh, the very last episode after um, A Time for Action Part 2. And it picks up right where the last one left off. So this episode originally aired September 23rd, 2006. And um, this episode airs kind of, it It's like the next album. So A Time for Action Part 2 aired May 20th, 2006. And this one aired September 23rd, 2006. So... Yeah, kind mm-hmm. of an interesting thing. They had to wait like the whole summer long to figure <laughs> out what Leonard Meltzer wanted. Yeah. Or why is he here? And uh, yeah, so let's get started on it. Um, we got in this episode, we got all the usuals. We got Eugene Meltzer, voiced by Will Ryan. You got John Whitaker, voiced by Paul Herlinger. And you got Katrina Meltzer, voiced by Audrey Wazalewski. Then you got a few extras. Um. We have Leonard Meltzner here, voiced by Phil Proctor, who, as we know, voices Detective Polhouse. We got Gobeer from uh, Prisoners of Fear, voiced by Tucker Smallwood. And we got the first appearance of Dalton Kern in this series, which he's a great villain for this small arc of episodes. And uh, he's voiced by Chuck McCann. Uh, we got the librarian with an unknown voice credit. And then we got the gas station attendant, voiced by Bob Hoos. And uh, I, I recognize this one listening to the episode. I'm like, oh, that's Bob Hoos. And uh, it's... Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's an interesting tidbit of Odyssey information. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, it's like you listen, you're listening to the episode, and you're like, wait a minute. I think I know that person <laughs> Yeah, in Odyssey. But... From the podcasts right there. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, Oh, yeah, and then we got Dalton's Henchman, which is an unknown voice credit. But it could be literally anyone. Mm-hmm. You know. Could be Bob Hoos. <laughs> could, no, it couldn't be Bob Hoos. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that's kind of all the cast we got. Uh, not that much, but, you know, could be more. So, without that, without uh, further ado, let's roll the promo. Let's do it. Eugene's search for his father may be coming to an abrupt end. What happened, Eugene? Why did he run off? I don't know. I can't believe this. I've lost him again. A long-awaited meeting, a shadowy figure, and a test of faith creates a different kind of search on the next Adventures in Odyssey. Uh, Okay, well, I mean, it's better than the last one, I'll say that. Yeah. But, I mean, the thing that gets me most of that promo is the weird music transition halfway. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, it just goes, it's like a cold cut. It's like, it's doing one thing, then boom, another thing. It's like, uh. A little bit weird. But... Yeah. I mean, it's okay. I, it I, worked. It works. It gets people excited for the the next album. <laughs> the next, I, I guess. I'd say the previously at the start of uh, Into the Light was probably better for getting people excited than the promo for this episode, but yeah, and that's a great uh, transition on into the episode. So we get the previously on Adventure Nazi, and this features clips from Last in the Long Line, Prisoners of Fear, and A Time for Action, and oh, and also um, what's what's the what's the other one called uh? Um, undeniable truth. Oh no no no, the like a uh, no. <laughs> oh, it, dead ends. Dead ends. That's it. Dead ends. Yeah, it features. I think it features a clip from Dead Ends too. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. Um. So this it, we get the um Chris intro, which it's nice to have that uh, clarifying bit to kind of review what we've uh, learned so far, mm-hmm. and we get the key points with those episodes. So, and then we go to the first scene. Um, 
And so this is a weird part because we get to this scene overlaps in the last episode and it's in this episode. So we get a bit of last episode or well, mm, a bit of the outro kind of thing, like an end scene. Yeah, kind of. End scene that continues. An end scene that one. continues, but then they yeah. changed it slightly, I think. I'm not sure. No, uh, maybe. They carry out the scene from but, oh, yeah. the end of uh, a Time for Action. Yeah, it reminds me of what they're doing with the Rydell, the new Rydell thing with Emily's conversation with Wits. Yeah. You know? I think they might do something similar with, you know, they might have like the beginning of that conversation. Probably. In the next one. Yeah. Uh, we already know what the conversation is, though, so it's not much of a reveal. Very excited for that episode, though. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> getting back to Leonard Meltzner. So. Um, for the sake of this podcast, for the sake of this episode, we're just going to review it again, what we've already talked about last episode. So um, if you remember, they're in this uh, homeless dinner and uh, Grady invited them to come to meet Joel because he invited Joel to the homeless dinner. And uh, yeah, so um, by the way, Grady just disappears from the dinner for some he's reason. gone for the whole album. Yeah, like uh, he's there and then... He just, like, goes from the dinner. I don't know. Maybe Wit's keeping Grady in the back doing something. <laughs> Tied up in yeah, the back. Maybe. Wit's sinister. <laughs> uh, true. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, um, so Eugene comes to Joel and uh, Joel, quote, unquote. And um, Joel's like, greetings. And Eugene's like, ah, oh, uh, greetings. And, uh, you know, we already talked about this. And, like, e- Eugene's like, uh, do you know anything about Leonard Meltzner? And Joel's like, you know the Meltzners? And Eugene's like, yeah, well, I am a Meltzner. And Joel's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. And uh, so Joel's like, uh, like, flabbergasted. And and Eugene's like, uh, until recently, I believe my father, uh, I believe my father died in Africa. But, uh, and I think he believed I died in Africa on the train. But, and I've been trying to find him. And can you help me? And Joel's like, oh, yeah, I know your father very well. And Eugene's like, where is he? He's like, I am your father. Star Wars. Oh. Star Wars. Uh, yeah, no, maybe not. <laughs> not. So, uh, and um, so Eugene's flabbergasted. And uh, and then we get the new episode s- 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 kind of starts right here. And so Eugene is just like flabbergasted, as I just said. Mm-hmm. And Leonard's like, you're supposed to be dead. Gasp, gasp. <laughs> and Eugene's like, uh, no, because I, I never went on that train that crashed. And apparently, and then Leonard's like, well, Gobier told me that you died. And um, I wrote down, they're both extremely happy. I mean, Leonard's happy, and Eugene's happy. And then Wit comes, and uh, Eugene introduces Leonard to Wit. And you can sense that Leonard's kind of tense here, but, I mean, it's only one-to-one, so, he, you know, he's still having it. But he's, like, uncomfortable. And then Eugene tell, and then Eugene's like, I gotta introduce you to everyone! <laughs> and then he just stands up in the middle of the room and's like, Everyone, meet my father! <laughs> and Leonard's like, no, no! And then he, Leonard just it's like, I, I gotta go! And he just runs out of the room, and Eugene's like, no! His favorite line is just, I gotta go. I gotta go! That's what he said back in, like, a time for action. Yeah, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I gotta go. It's yeah. kind of weird, though, that, like, uh, both Eugene and his father both have the same reputation for being dead among different places. Yeah. Like, uh, what's the guy's name? Um... The guy from Prisoners of Fear, uh, Yosef. Yosef. Um, when they see him again in the top four, um, he's like, aren't you supposed to be dead? And it's like, all the Mausners are just like, supposed to be dead, but aren't. <laughs> yeah. It's it, 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 it's It's interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, and obviously, Leonard still has lots of work to do with the Ashantis at this point. But, so. mm-hmm. but anyway, so... Uh, um, Eugene, like, uh, and then Eugene's like, "Oh, we lost my dad, my father again." <laughs> it's like, "Whoa, Eugene, yeah, but you could have like, his father was trying like, Eugene, you don't have to do this." And then Eugene just like does it, and then his father runs away. So yeah, kind of Eugene's fault, mm-hmm. you know. And so we go to the next scene, and Eugene's on the phone with Gobier because his father had told him that uh, Gobier said Eugene died on the train crash. So Eugene's like, "Ah." I need to talk to Gobier. <laughs> and I have written down that Gobier is using this tower that he was uh, so initially opposed to. Yeah. To communicate with Eugene. That's true. 
So, uh, interesting flashback. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Eugene's talking to Gobir on the on the phone using the tower that Eugene built. And uh, he's like, why would you say that? And Gobir's like, ah, Eugene, I don't want to talk about it. And Eugene's like, uh, come on, please. And so Gobir's like, fine. And then so he's like, so basically his story is the American came to the village to promise Ashanti's riches. And his name was Dalton Kern. And many Ashantis left with him to dig for gold. And uh, Gobir left everything. And uh, he was deceived by Dalton Kern. And um, Eugene's like, yeah. And then so Gobir's like, he goes on and he's like, so Dalton found Gobir to be a valuable asset and uh, made him his second in command, which, wow, it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He just made, you know, a random African man. Yeah. <laughs> tribe. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, if he's influential. Mm-hmm. But uh, he, I guess he, he was he, the leader. Of... No, he wasn't. Yosef was the leader. Didn't he become the leader after though? Yeah, but he wasn't the leader at that time. Uh, yeah, that's true. Huh. Yeah. I wonder why Yosef wasn't made. I wonder why Yosef didn't go to. Maybe because he snuck away from his tribe. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's weird. Anyway, um, we have our. If you wanna hear more of my talk on that, listen to my earlier episodes. <laughs> so, uh, um, so, and then we go to. Oh, and then one day Dalton Kern had a dreadful assignment for Gobier. So then we go to a flashback, which is very cool, and uh, we get the first Dalton Kern appearance, mm-hmm. and uh, it's really good. A milestone. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> so Gobir and Dalton in Africa, Zaire, or the Congo, as it should be called. Um, so Leonard Meltzner's son's coming on a train, and Dalton wants Gobir to, quote-unquote, bring him here. <laughs> yeah. And so he wants Eugene... So basically, he wants Eugene to use as a leverage with Leonard. He wants to kidnap Eugene, and then he's like, look, Leonard, if you want to see your son... <laughs> you gotta work for you us. Gotta wor- yeah. Gotta get us gold. Unfortunately, yeah, I mean, Eugene wasn't even on that train in the first place, so even no. if it didn't crash, it wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> Maybe they kidnapped Michael Mushnick. Oh, uh, spoilers! No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. So, um, uh, and then Dalton tells Gobier that he'll quote unquote set Eugene and Leonard free which <laughs> sure he's lying yeah sure sure and uh, this is when Leonard was still with the Ashantis and then the flashback ends and Gobier's on the phone and so Gobier went uh, to do this knowing that Dalton was lying but he still went anyway and uh, he came to the Kindu I think it's called and he found out about the train crash and he thought Eugene had perished and, uh, and so then Dalton kidnaps uh, Leonard and L- Leonard Meltzner and his wife by force, kind of. It's like, well, dang, can't use Eugene. It's just uh, do it by force. Yeah. Or he can't use his son. That's Thelma, right? Thelma mm-hmm. Melsner? Thelma Melsner. Thelma. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. That would be interesting if we had her as, like, a main character like Leonard mm-hmm. in this series. But it's too bad they had to kill her off before her. they got but we, anybody But we hear her. her in the... New Era, yeah. New Era. But that was still younger her, but... Her with Joanne, because, of course, what are the coincidences? Yeah, it's Odyssey. Everybody knows everybody from everywhere. everywhere. I know. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, then we go to the next scene. And the Eugene's closing wit's end. And I have written down that it's just a great musical transition in this scene. Mm-hmm. And so Eugene's closing down wit, wit's end, and he closes it. And then his father comes up from the bushes. And this is kind of the album art. Yeah. You, you see Eugene and his father, and it's like into the lights. And uh, isn't his father supposed to have a mustache though? I thought did he shave it off while he was in it, disguise? It, it's a disguise. It's all a disguise. No, but he couldn't have a disguise that covered up the mustache, oh, unless okay. he had like a mask on. But yeah. I thought he just had like a wig on and then like a fake beard or something. I don't. I don't know it's because a... on the album art he is. Uh, there's no mustache. He's just like a plain shaved guy. I was kind of wondering about that the other day. Yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure either. So, uh, huh. Yeah, <laughs> I never thought of that until now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, you know. so uh, his father jumps out from the bushes, which is just funny. And uh, he's like, I thought this place closed at 9. It's 11.30. And Eugene's like, ah, I was uh, just doing things on the internet looking for Dalton Kern. <laughs> Which is funny because Eugene, like, it sounds like Eugene closed up the business when he just did it, you know? He's like, yeah. But in, in reality, you know, he's just been, like, on 
You, so you could, like, be in wit's end until, like, 11.30 while your dean's just on the computer? It's true. Just hiding in a booth. Yeah. Booth? Booth. booth. Yeah, booth, yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so, uh, Leonard's like, I, uh, I shouldn't even be here, and, uh, Dalton might be watching us right now. And Eugene's like, uh, uh, let's get out of the light. <laughs> so, they, <laughs> so they do. And uh, then Eugene asked his father, like, if, um, if he thought Eugene was dead, why did he come to Odyssey? And Leonard's like, well, I wanted to try to reconcile with Hiram Meltzner, my my dad, but uh, he, I, re- I realized he died a few years ago. And uh, so and Leonard thought he basically had lost everyone. Eugene, Hiram, Thelma, Everett. And Eugene's like, Everett? <laughs> yeah. Who's Everett? And uh, Also, how if it was a few years ago when Hiram died, then how long was this supposed to take place in between like last in the long line to where uh this episode is uh it's a good it's another good point it's uh because there's been so many like families in odyssey that all grew up or like and with everett melsner he sounds like kind of like 13 12 ish Mm -hmm. but it was over he was like a baby in africa but that was like 20 years ago yeah it's a little bit of an Uh, awkward thing in the plot line yeah Mm -hmm. Uh, mm, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, yeah. So he, he Leonard tells Eugene that Everett died in Africa when he was two, but like it happened like twenty years ago. Mm-hmm. And when we later hear Everett in the top floor, he sounds like twelve. He's such a young kid. So that would only make it like ten years ago. Yeah. <laughs> or even less. Yeah. Um, strange timeline but. yeah really weird i i just get the feeling that they didn't really think of that aspect of it no don't think so but, oh well i mean if leonard if everett Meltzer was like 18 maybe but uh, i don't know mm-hmm. it's it's weird so um anyway getting back to that um uh, um uh leonard's still pretty scared about Dalton. he's like i don't want to be talking about this anymore like uh i i i can't really be seen with you and uh Eugene's like, well, I don't really care about this. It all seems like unimportant. <laughs> and Leonard's like, unimportant? What? <laughs> it's important, Eugene. This man imprisoned me for like all these years. <laughs> and Eugene's like, well, I have a god that'll protect me in these lunch. No, he does. He says that later. Uh, so he tells Eugene that he can't be seen with him, or scarcely, and he'll decide when they next meet. And Eugene's pretty disappointed, like a deflated balloon. Uh, that he can't get more of a reunion with his father. Then we go to a pretty short scene, short by my standards. So Eugene's at Wit's end. And uh, so Eugene comes up to Wit's office and he knocks on the door. Or, or he comes into Wit's office and uh, he's like, Eugene, Wit, can, like, do you have the resources to just protect my dad? <laughs> and <Wit's> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course, I'm Wit. You know, <laughs> I have unlimited money. Uh, <laughs> let's buy a few security cameras here and... Uh, uh, Razor fence and uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but uh, no, 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 no. It's like, uh, and then Wit tells Eugene that he tracked down uh, an important detail about Dalton Kern from a archaeolo- archaeologist friend of his. <laughs> yeah, Alfred Brownlee, maybe. Mm? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, so Dalton left Africa about a month ago, and uh, no one knows where he is. Da da da. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I'll go to. Probably the most comedic scene of this episode. Yeah, with an ad lib. Great ad lib. Yeah. And it's a really weird attendant intercom system. <laughs> yeah. Because like, Eugene pulls up and the gas station employee... Oh, and there's there's this um great quote. There's this great quote in here. The AO wiki has it. Uh, so, um... And so he's like, Pump number four, you're ready. Let me know if you need anything. And Eugene melts under his breath. You can start by lowering your prices. Gas station. Excuse me? Ah, uh, nothing. Just lamenting the energy crisis. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it's, I've never been, have you ever been to a gas station where this is a thing? No. An intercom? Maybe in the U.S., I don't know. But, <laughs> I mean, I've been to the U.S. and it's. I've never been like to a gas station like that in the U.S. either. Though. Normal. Yeah. And if there, if it's like full serve, they come out. 
They don't talk on an intercom. That's and like wouldn't there be other people in the gas station? It's an Odyssey it's, <laughs> gas station. It's yeah, special. But it sounds like this guy is just like he doesn't have anything else to do. <laughs> He's just <laughs> trolling with people. <laughs> He's a Christian too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, so it's yeah. I don't know how this works. Um. So um, Eugene's filling up, about to fill up his car, and then Leonard comes. And Leonard's like, just don't look at me. Just keep pumping your gas. And he says that pretty quietly. And then the weird gas station attendant on the intercom asks, why, <laughs> why can't, can't he look at you? <laughs> and it's really weird and inappropriate for a gas clerk to be, like... <laughs> <laughs> He's butting into people's personal lives. Oh, it's all good. Really. <laughs> and Eugene's like, uh, just don't, like... He's like, just keep your nose in your own business, dude. <laughs> He's like, sorry. <laughs> but he, he doesn't. He just, like... He's like still w- looking at them, and so, uh, um, and so, Eugene's like, "You have a, you're like, because Leonard has like this nice car, and Eugene's like, you're a homeless person with a gra- brand new car, and Leonard's like, it's a rental. I might have to quick it, make a quick exit, <laughs> and then the gas station employee's like, uh, just turn left, like once you do the street for a quick exit. He's like, yeah. <laughs> no offense, but we're engaged in a private conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like shut up. Yeah, <laughs> we're busy here, and uh, gas station employee is definitely Bob Hoose, which you can tell at this point. You know, mm-hmm. it's like oh, that's definitely Bob Hoose. And uh, so Eugene's like, ah, stop, and and then um, and then so they both like go in the vehicle. And they're like, let's go in the car. Yeah, and this is weird. Oh, I'll I'll get into it later, but. Apparently, the gas station employee can hear the entire conversation from in the car. They just can't hear him. Apparently. Yeah. Because they have, like, high-tech microphones at this <laughs> gas station. <laughs> yes, they have mics on each <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> pump. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah. And so, um, oh, no, because Eugene... Uh, sorry. This this happens a bit later. So, um, Eugene tells Leonard under his breath that Dalton left Africa. And then Eugene laments that uh, he can't talk with his father much. And then he mentions to his father that he's a Christian. And the weird gas station attendant's <laughs> like, Hey, congratulations! <laughs> Which, uh, if this guy's a... He's probably a Christian, so why <laughs> is he eavesdropping on a conversation <laughs> that he's been told not to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. It's, it's weird. <laughs> then they get into the car. Then they get into the car. Yeah. And it's, Eugene insists they put on seatbelts, which is just funny because... Uh, They're not going anywhere. <laughs> he's like, it's a good habit. And I'm just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and then so he explains to dad why he, that he's a Christian. And uh, his dad's surprised and asks if that's kind of the reason he's doing Hand Up. And uh, apparently Leonard visited Hand Up's website. And so... And, um, and you know, he saw just at the front page and Eugene starts to tell more and he's like, Eugene, I really have to go now. I can't be seen with you much. And Eugene's like, no, but like, I, I want a relationship. And he's like, I'm sorry, but it's all I can offer you right now. He's like, but this is horrible for me. He's like, I'm sorry. It's all I can offer right now. Goodbye. Oh, and that's when Eugene actually says uh, the title of the episode is he, what, when he cover talks, of darkness talks about it's being like, tired of meeting and under the cover, cover of, of darkness. darkness. Yeah, but before that, he also tells his dad that he should visit the gallery page of his website because yeah. there's photos of him, which comes into play later in the mm-hmm. episode. Yeah, and then so um, so Leonard just leaves, and then Eugene gets out, and the weird and inappropriate gas station employee is like, "Don't worry, it'll all work <laughs> out," <laughs> which is. Yeah. Weird. Eugene is like, ah, uh, thanks. And he's like, uh, and the gas station employee's like, and uh, be sure not to drive angry. Which, <laughs> that's not real. Well, okay. And Eugene's like, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just really fu- kind of funny. Mm-hmm. And then we get the one short scene with Katrina. And so, um, it's at Eugene's house. And then, um, so uh, Eugene's typing a, like a card that he can carry around and he's going to laminate it. And it has questions he can ask his dad whenever he sees him. And so Katrina, um, and then Katrina kind of like tells him that her father would have, have advice. He'd say like family first, unlike what Leonard is doing. Huh. Bad Leonard. Yeah. You know, he should be, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, about the archaeologist, he just should be family first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, 
pitching a set so that they could adopt the saying, a family is worth the risk. Which, do you have thoughts about this saying? I, I agree. And, yeah. It's a good it's, saying. But it is. It's probably better than family first. Probably. Because, I don't know. But yeah. Kind of says more about that, but I don't know. It's a good phrase. Mm-hmm. And then she tells him that if uh, he believes family is worth the risk, then maybe his father will also. Mm-hmm. So then we go to another pretty short scene, and uh, and uh, Wit, like uh, it's uh, Wee Jean comes into Wit's office, and he just asks Wit if they have the resources to protect his father, because uh, Wit is just like made out of money apparently. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> and Wit's like, yeah, I'm confident. So, oh. the, but the question is if they can convince your dad. And Eugene's like, ah, yeah, I just don't know when I'll see him again. He might have skipped town. And then he's like, wait a minute. <laughs> I told my dad to look at my gallery page. Oh. oh. <laughs> and then so we go to um, a fairly long scene, uh, probably the hardest scene to listen to in the episode, uh, the library scene. So Eugene's at the library and he's asking the librarian if a homeless man has been in the library. And she sounds tired and cranky and she's like, ah, I don't know. He's like, oh, come on. But like homeless <laughs> man, long hair. And she's like, I don't know. <laughs> he's like okay the funny thing is this librarian has been in like more than just this one episode she's like the the librarian uh oh man she's like uh she was in like family portraits number four no stupid questions oh snap that's a long time ago yeah and uh, you go to school where which is the home homeschooling episode that adventures and odyssey like denounced <laughs> <laughs> it's true uh, and, oh, and that she's also in the, the library in 60-something, which... Oh, and Home I, is Where the Herd is with Kurt. Okay. Yeah. That was a we sad episode. These, it was 60-something, where Wit's angry at the 60s. <laughs> Thy kingdom come with, like, Lawrence Hodges. Yeah. And the power with the weird Nikki and so... Oh, yeah. And then uh, we got... So, it she, this librarian, this unnamed librarian is just, like, in so many... And the last episode she's in is uh, No Cause for Concern, which is fairly recent, actually. Yeah, that was on. Um, wait, where was what was no cause for concern on? Uh, oh, um, head over heels. Right, I always forget the title for that album. That's when uh, Penny's like uh, Wooten's been like snooping into my back story. Yeah, and that's the one with uh, the psychic. I think that's the. No, 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 no. Isn't that the one with between the lines? No, it's before. It's before they. Oh get no, no, that's the that's one with, with uh, Wellington. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Uh, Okay, I think they really need to just name this librarian. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, name her Cindy or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, so this librarian, this un unnamed librarian, just librarian. Um, so she's like pretty snappish at Eugene. She's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So he goes into the library and then he sees his father. And I wrote down, Leonard is not impressed with Eugene at this moment. <laughs> no. He's just like not happy with Eugene at all. And, uh, so, um, uh, you, um, Eugene erased this message to Leonard from his webpage because that's what Eugene did. But Eugene brings up the point that if Dalton found the webpage, uh, he basically found Eugene. And so Leonard's like, okay, Eugene, you got to erase your website. And Eugene's like, no, I refuse to live my life, uh, that, that, that way. And, uh, and, uh. Then we kind of get the one fight between... We get a fight between Leonard and Eugene. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, that was quite a scene. Yeah. But Eugene offers Leonard to, like, stay at his house because they can protect him. And he, he starts, like, telling him the plan that he and Wit set up. And Leonard's like, no, I'm not going to endanger you. And, uh... It's a kind of sad. It's a kind of sad. And then he's like, um... It's an emotional scene. It's very emotional. Them. And then you... Uh, Eugene's like, I, but I want to have a life with you. I want you to be my wife and uh, your friends and uh, be introduced to your life. I don't want to live my life in this thing. And Leonard like, gets really kind of angry with Eugene. And he's like, don't you speak to me like that. You don't know the pain I went through. What? <laughs> yeah. And then like, he's like, I, I spent nights listening to my wife Thelma groan with pain. And I'm like, why? <laughs> like, what? No, that would be when they were in imprisonment, and she, she was in childbirth, I guess. Uh, yeah, with Everett, I guess. And there was really, because he had no medical experience or background, so he probably didn't know how to deliver Everett. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I could see that. I guess, I don't know. Or they could have hurt her, I guess, to try and get him to help them dig for gold. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess so. I, I could see that. So, um, uh, and then Eugene's, and then Eugene's like, huh, sounds to me like Dalton Kern still has you locked up in prison. Which, oh, oh, that's kind of hard. Savage. Harsh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Eugene, you don't know what your dad's just been through. He's you've always had, you, like all nice... or nothing with the things he says to me. It like, gets super, like, it's like, rude. Yeah, but it's like Eugene's had such a nice life in Odyssey. <laughs> His dad's like, it's like. Oof, ouch. Yeah. And <laughs> okay. Dalton Kern hasn't found him in the whole time that he's been alive. Well, okay, I'll get into that later. But we'll get into that later. Yeah. In the last scene. Uh, so, um, anyway, um, uh, Eugene's like, I'm different than you because I have faith in a God who helps me not be afraid. And then <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's not me, dude. And so Eugene's like, well, I see then because... And here's like a whole bunch of pictures, school reports, and snippets of my life. And uh, if this is what a relationship has to be, so be it. And then Eugene just like leaves. Yeah, just bye. <laughs> <laughs> this time he didn't let his father just leave. He's like, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then so we go to the next one at Wit's End. And Wit's like, it's like, oh, well, you did the right thing, Eugene. And uh, Wit's basically like, uh, Leonard will ask to decide the next move. And uh, Eugene's like, well... I left him an email address. I'm going to check that. So he goes upstairs. Then the bell ring, you know, the bell comes in. And Leonard comes through the door. And uh, he's like, oh, you're a witch, right? And he's like, yeah. And then it's like, Eugene respects you so deeply. Like, he has a great mentor in you, you know. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, well, you have a really good son. And then Eugene comes downstairs. Because apparently his father hasn't responded to his or hasn't emailed him. He sees his father, and so like kind of goes out. And his dad's been looking through his uh, like box of report cards. He's like, "What's this toddy you had in second semester of tenth grade?" And he's like, "Oh, I was at the dentist. He was excused." <laughs> he's like, "Oh, good. Then I would have had to like, ground you." <laughs> Which it, it's kind of like an, it's it's nice because it's like you know it's, a, it's like a, the it, first it, joke it, his a, dad a, a jokey manner you know yeah. So um, then Leonard remarks that Katrina's pretty, and uh, he would like to meet her today and she's <laughs> like ah, yes that would be nice and then leonard like hesitantly tells eugene that he trusts him and eugene's like well eugene assures his father that he will with the help of god keep them safe mm -hmm. and uh, then we go to the last scene with the kind Dalton. of pretty much end scene dalton kern <laughs> yeah yeah dalton kern <laughs> So um, Dalton's on the phone with some random henchman, and uh, they found out nothing. But he's sure Leonard left Africa. Which, wait a minute, I thought he, I thought like, wouldn't he think that was Leonard was Leonard dead? Was dead in the cave in? I guess he wouldn't have. Or maybe he found maybe. some information about yeah somebody it's, it's seeing just Leonard. Weird because everyone else believed Leonard. Even Yosef believes Leonard is uh, yeah. dead. So why doesn't Dalton <laughs> think Leonard's dead? Yeah. Maybe he found the time. I don't know. Oh, maybe. Oh, maybe. Um, like, cause the the wolves, they they like they're like, where did they go? <laughs> like the three prisoners we had, and that was like Haziz and uh, mm -hmm. and the and then they like found the tunnel, and it's like, <gasps> and then they're like, wait a minute, Leonard, let's start looking through these rubble and see if we can find Leonard Meltzer's bones. Yeah. And no. They never found it. I guess. So Dalton's like, ah, he's still alive. He's Get still, him. <laughs> he's still alive. Yeah. So uh, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of where the episode ends off. Yeah. Just with him kind of being persistent. It, oh, about... Dalton Kern's like, I'm not resting until I find Leonard Meltzner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> da, da, da. They just ended off there on kind of a cliffhanger, I guess. I guess. The next, ep the next episode isn't really that much of a cliffhanger, though. They don't really bring it back to Dalton Kern until, until Top Floor. Top Floor. So that's kind of, that, that honestly is a little bit annoying, how they ended that there. Yeah. And then had one just kind of, like, middle episode in between. And yeah. then brought back to the Dalton Kern, kind of. I feel like the the Undeniable, tr uh, the undeniable Truth, the, the next one, it would be better, like, after the Top Floor. Yeah. 
And and then you can do a new era? Like, probably right before a new era, because that would have kind of led right into that. Because it's kind of like the same kind of feel, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. But at least it's not a three-parter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> three-parters. They're, they're, they've had some good three-parters. They do. And then they have some, okay, meh, three-parters. Yeah. But anyway, we get the uh, Chris wrap-up about basically trusting in, in the protection that God has promised his people, which is better than the last Chris wrap-up. Yeah. For sure. Definitely better. Um, and so the Bible verse we get is Psalm 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Which is... Uh, it's a pretty good verse for that. Yeah, about uh, trusting in the protection that God gives you. Mm-hmm. I guess that's kind of the only moral the episode has. Yeah. It's, more, it's, pre- it's quite a plot-heavy episode. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, Although, probably not as plot-heavy as the top four, but they spread that that's out. That's a three. three-parter. Yeah. So, it makes sense. Yeah. I guess in the essence of it being just one episode, it's probably about the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, that's all I have for this episode. Yeah, me too. Um, so, anyway, we'll be back next time with episode 607, The Undeniable Truth. Yep. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>